Vidyam Karavahai Tejas Vinavadhi Tamas Umavid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Om Sadashiva Samaram Ham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Padyantam Bande Guru Paramparam Shutismati Purana Nam Alayam Karna Layam Namam Bhagavat Padam Shankaram Loka Shankaram Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Bhagarayanam Sutra Bhashyakrita Vande Bhagavanta Upunam Punaha Samastadam Kalyane Niratam Karna Mayam Namami Chinmayam Devam Satyurindam Havitvaram We will chant the first and the second shloka of Sajna Panchakam. You have it in your course material. Yudho nitya madhi yatam taduditam karma svanushti yatam tene shatya vidhi yatam apachitihi kamye matis yadyatam papal ghapari dhu yatam bhavasukhe Dosho no sandhi yatam, Atme chavya vasi yatam nijadha, Purnam vinir gam yatam, Sangha sat suvidhi yatam bhagavato, Bhaktir dridhadhi yatam, Shantya ritparichi yatam dridhataram, Karma shusantya yatam, Sadvedvanu pasrupyatam pratidinam tatpaduka sevyatam brahmai kaksharam arthyatam shrutishiro vakyam samakarnyatam. So we saw what should be done after you drop attachment to the home. Do satsang, strength and devotion to the Lord. Cultivate the sixfold virtues. Give up all those actions which are not conducive to the spiritual growth. And then go to a guru. Approach a guru and serve the guru. Pratidinam tat paduka sevyatam. So paduka seva is not just the worship of the feet or the padukas. It is also serving the master. Serving the vision of the master. Master may not be in the physical form, then continue the legacy, the vision of the master. Now, at the end of the class, we will take up the Paduka Puja. We will continue with the instructions now. Brahmai Kaksharam Arthyatam. Brahmai Kaksharam means Om. Om is Ekaksharam Brahma. One sound symbol indicating Brahman. As we have said earlier, there is the form of Om has come about somehow, but actually Om is a sound symbol. So Sagun Nirakar. So Brahma Eka Aksharam. So what indicates Brahma in one syllable is this supreme Om. It is a Vedic mantra in many of these Upanishads. It is found, and the most powerful mantra is Om. The essence of the Vedic knowledge is in Om. And hence, Omkar is to be used for making the mind single pointed. So, Seva of the Guru to purify the mind, chanting of Om to make the mind single pointed. While one chants Om, what should one do? Om is the primordial sound. Om and Atha are the primordial sounds, meaning the sounds which have come out first. And they further become grassified to become this gross creation. So generally we also say Om Iti Dagum Sarvam. The Upanishad says that Om alone is all this. 
the subtler sound vibration becomes more and more grosser and solid, but it is vibration only. So in Om, A, U, and Ma, three alphabets, they cover all the sound possibilities. Ma is the last alphabet in the class consonant of Sanskrit language. A is the first alphabet in the vowels. And when we chant Om also, the sound starts, actually should start from the Nadi, but sometimes it is only the throat and they of the throat. A, U, E. So even if you say, uh, you see the vibration here. Uh, so some people chant, uh, or some people say, Om. Because O and U becomes O. So, Om. Both are correct. It doesn't have to be only any one. So it covers all the sound possibilities and sound itself is the symbol of the Supreme. Because the sound, how does the sound come? How the sound originates because of consciousness. Speech cannot produce sound by itself. If we seek the source of the sound, the source of the sound will be consciousness alone. So, Omkar, when we say Om, we don't remember Om only as just the sound, but we connect divinity with that sound. That this Om is a symbol of that consciousness which pervades everything. And hence, the consciousness is indicated by Om. We, our focus must go on consciousness. That, that there is one consciousness inside me, outside me, everywhere. That consciousness is indicated by And because the whole creation is nothing but sound vibration and grosser sound vibration of home itself, so you can see the sound, you can listen to the sound of home in many things in the creation. In the ringing of the bell, you can listen to the sound of home. One bell you in the temple you go and ring the bell. The sound that comes, you can listen to Om in that. In the waves you can listen, in the flute you can listen, in the crying of a child, in the barking of a small puppy. Anywhere you can listen. Is Om will be there, you can listen to Om. And Om is the, because it's a primordial sound, it pervades all the other sounds. So Om is that consciousness which pervades everything in the creation as sound also. Om is that consciousness which pervades as consciousness also. Everything is an appearance of that consciousness alone. And the Vedantic meaning of Om is what the Upanishads indicate. The Mandukya Upanishad says that. A, the waking state. Why is A the waking state? Because A is the first alphabet. And waking is the first state. We go through. A. Then U is the dream state. Because it's in the middle. And Ma is the deep sleep. Because when we say Ma, our mouth closes. Everything becomes unmanifest in deep sleep. So A, U, Ma. Three states indicated by three alphabets. A, U, and Ma. Waking, dream, deep sleep. Now between the two ohms, there is silence. That silence is the Suriyavas. Very interesting that is. The silence alone is actually the sound is a appearance, it comes and goes. Even when the sound is there, silence is there. Sound is not, silence is still there. So silence is there before the sound, silence is there after the sound, and silence is also there in the sound. Just that our attention is on the sound, so we are not experiencing silence. So that is how it is a substratum. Consciousness is substratum. Waking dream are there, consciousness is there. Waking dream are not there. Deep sleep, consciousness is there. All the three also when we transcend, what is there? Consciousness only is there. So, Brahmai Kachara Marthyatam here, the Vedantic meaning I am just explaining, but what Sadhana Panchakam is telling us is use Omkar as a means for concentration. Making the mind single point. So just chant Om 
have the bhav that i am remembering consciousness and focus on the sound if the mind wanders somewhere then bring the form of om in the mind otherwise form is not required just focus on the sound and have the feeling that this consciousness alone pervades everywhere and just focus on the sound om 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 you can say fast you can say it slow you can say it in both combination we will learn next class we will learn omkar upasana so om how can you use it you can begin the day with om as soon as you get up you can write a letter begin the journey anything you can begin by saying om we begin our class by saying om om sarna bhavatu Maybe we should do that. The first thing he would do is when he gets up in the morning, three times loudly he will chant Om on the bed only. Can we chant without brushing the teeth? That's no problem. Come. Better than seeing the Om chant. Open the eyes and chant Om three times. Can I chant while sleeping only? No, get up. See, and then chant. Don't do horizontal movement. Sit down, proper erect, and then chant Om three times loudly. You know, and the point is, after you wake up, you should do that. Chant Om and then get out of the bed. Don't say Om three times or chant it now and feeling if you if you not. No. If that is your case, then get up out of the bed, stand, and then chant Om and then go straight to get ready. So first thing you can do. Ending of the day also remember the Lord Om and sleep. Many Hindus use Om as a first thing. And then now the hearing also is coming Om. Where all people use Om and then just to wear, but more than wearing it is Padma. On temples and many places one can see Om. It is added to every mantra to make it complete. <clears throat> and in Gita we have Om Tat Tat. Every action has some incompleteness. That incompleteness will go the moment we say, even just we say Om, or only say Tat, or only say Sat, or you say all the three together, Om Tat Tat. The idea is remember that which is perfect, which is complete. So Om. There are many applications of Om actually. You know the child when the child is born, you can tell in the ears of the child Om. Then you are divine. Tell the child Om. That's Om. I think the child don't understand anything. How do you? Which jiva is from? How do you? Shukla Maharaj to realize in the womb only. Ashtavakar Maharaj realized in the womb, Shukadev Maharaj refused to come out till 12 years so he didn't come out. He said, till I don't realize the self, I will not come out because this Maya is terrible. Maya will catch me and I will suffer only. So we don't know which is the evil. But we will not chant till some foreign people will do some research and they will say, "Can you do some vibratory effect of Om and how it will help the child and the brain development of the child is started by that?" Something they will tell you. Then one will say, "Yes." This we know thousands of years back. So why are we not practicing? No, no, we have to wait till the rest will come and tell us. So Om has many applications. This. Uh, One of the samskar is where we, with a golden stick dipped in honey, and we write Om on the tongue. Now, as soon as the child is born, and that is the anna prasan karuna. Not as soon as the child is born. And I was told that it is as soon as you are born, but. Some people say no, no. What is that? Hygiene reasons and body will not uh, take this, that. So they generally don't do at that time. Ah, oh, correct. You know why gold stick? 
is it pure as material? The second is it is changeless. It represents changeless too. Gold is a noble metal. Not easy to mix with other. It remains in pure state. So then you use your gold. And then write. I knew it was some at the day of the birth only, but some people said, no, no, it is not done at that time. The child is very small, then it will get infection, this, that. So we will do after some days. Annaprasana time we will do. Some people do at Vidyaramba time. Vidyaramba, of course, with the finger, you make them right. Om on the rice. So Om has a lot of application. And Om is the importance of Om, we should never undermine. Do not, uh, so there are two extremes in this. There are some people who will say, no, no, Om is a very, very sacred, sati mantra. Not everybody can chant Om. You must have Ajikara to chant Om. So purity of mind is not there, then you cannot chant Om. Uh, one extreme. No doubt it is Sati Mantra, preparation is required. That's a good thing. But don't deny them on the basis of birth, saying only Brahmins will chant Om. That nobody said. And some people will tell that also. If you are not a Brahmin, you don't have Adhikar only to chant. Or if you are not a if you are a Grahasti, you, you don't have any Adhikar to chant Om. Okay, that is all degradation of the culture. And then the other extreme is those who will take Om absolutely lightly and make fun of it, add it in so many things where it is not even considered sacred. Like in some songs, no? so many years back it came. Om Shanti Om Tode, yeah, maybe also. A song is also written. Like that, many places. Hari Om Hari from some song thing. Like that, they just trivialize the whole thing. Very sadhana level, what is where, and you're making song and then doing disco dance on that. So, both extremes one should not have. Sacredness of home we should remember and just use it as a very beautiful. It is, and please remember, it's not just the sound, it is Ekaksharam Brahma. It is Brahman appearing as the sound. We generally think it is only sound. From where the sound came, Vani. In our culture, we associate Vani with Devi Saraswati. Sound comes because of consciousness only. How does the sound function otherwise? Speech cannot function without that. Yad vacha nabdhi putam yena vaga bhujyate tadeva brahma pandhi nedam yadidam upasa. Keno Panishad says beautifully that which cannot be illumined by the speech but which illumines the speech know that to be brahman. If brahman's presence is not there we can't even say anything. Speech will not even function. So now that is the thing. Om sadhana. So as a sound, it is the means to purify and unify the mind. And as the symbolic meaning, it is the very goal. I contemplate that Omkar is my Swarup. With Ganesh Ji also now Om is connected. Omkar is Swarup uh, for Ganesha. So even the figure of Om and Ganesh Ji gets merged. So that way we do, we use Om for the sadhana. So Brahmai Kaksha Marchyatam. Now such a mind which has served the teacher and purified the mind and such a mind which has unified itself. Now with such a mind which is pure and single pointed one listens to the truth. From the Sadhguru. The master whom one has approached. Why? Because Shruti Shiro Vakyam Samakarnyatam. Shruti Shiro means the head of the Shruti. Head of the Shruti means the Upanishads. Don't confuse it. Saying Upanishad to comes in the end of the Shruti. So that is where the Anta, how Anta becomes the head. It is because the, the Philosophy of the entire Sanatan Dharma is the Upanishad. The rest of the rituals and meditations, Upasanas, etc. are meant to prepare oneself for that. So the essence, when we say the word head here, don't think head means the beginning. 
it is the down portion. So how this can be had? No, it is the essence. The essence of the Vedic knowledge is Aham Brahmasmi, Tattvamasi, all that. Jiva Brahma, each is the essence. So it is the head. So listen to the Upanishads. Which means that I should prepare myself also. Not that see, it is a relation to Upanishad. It is not saying listen to Tattva Bodh, 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 Bodh. So I want to study Upanishad first. Okay, try. One will not understand. So listen to Upanishad means prepare one's mind properly and then come to study the Upanishad ultimately. One has to study any signs or terms and terminologies. So all these books are helpful for that. Imagine though Upanishad seekers, they did not even have such books. Shankaracharya and other great masters, they wrote such books for us so that we are able to have a firm foundation. Otherwise, how? We, suddenly, if you imagine, we, we will, will we even know that there is a self? That question which was there for such Upanishad seekers, will it, it will not even come to us. You know, Upanishad seeker is thinking, what is that which prompts the mind to go to the object? Munda combination that seeker is saying that what is that knowing which everything will become known? Those questions do they even strike us? They won't strike on you. Even when we are listening to those questions in the Upanishad, we wonder what is the big question in this? Why have they asked this? So on our own, so we would not have known. And then the teacher giving answer, no idea what that answer will be. So we need to know the background properly. So it means prepare the base properly and then come to study the Upanishad. Now Shruti Shiro Vakyam means Mahavakya. Samakarnyatam. Listen very carefully. So listening is not hearing, it is to hear with attention, alertness and awareness. Otherwise one is just hearing something. Today, so many things that are happening in the country, half of it is like that. They are just hearing something and then protesting. Are you to say something? What are you fighting against? There is nothing to fight against. They are all vested interests. They are trying to destroy the country. Nothing else. There is nothing to fight. There is no discrimination against anybody. And constitution is not even being affected, is not violated at all. It's such a simple thing. But nahin, they won't listen, they won't read, they won't understand. Half of the protesters, they will go on and ask them, okay, what are you protesting again? They have no clue what they are protesting again. So it's like that. One is not listening. So listening means with full attention, alertness, understanding. And very important is listen to understand before communicating to be understood. We won't listen what the opposite person is saying before grasping it fully. While that person is talking itself, what am I doing? Framing answer in my head. What will I respond? Listen to the full thing first. In between, they have to tell all this person has to tell. First. Wait, let me complete. Before that, Already this person's response starts. So generally one doesn't listen. One of the biggest problems in the world today is people don't listen to each other at all. How strange is that? Now, how the development of all communication technology, how much development has happened, but listening between people has reduced such impatience. One WhatsApp message also one will not read. If it is long message, it is still okay. Chota one, one line message, it will be there. And the best part is after putting that message, another two messages, somebody else has put something, and then immediately this person will ask about that message only. Are, why don't you scroll and read? Why are you on the road? No, no reading, no listening, no understanding. What are the dates? When is it happening? Are you read the flyer? It is put up there. You can you tell me? I am sitting free, not to put on that. Why don't you read? 
how do i register for it yeah you tell me all details your registration i will do in my head are link is given there press it form will open type it over nobody read nobody listen earlier it was email you send then people said nobody takes email then whatsapp sms then came whatsapp now you are sending whatsapp also sms also email also social media also still they want to now what else can you do shoot one arrow which can go inside their brain that is only left now or give one pill khane mein mila ke de do so they will immediately understand what are upcoming programs meaning where is my attention you just think about it attention span has reduced so much attention span has reduced means what ability to listen and focus has gone down earlier they used to say it is 1 hour okay then it became 45 minutes then it became 35 minutes now it is 20 minutes 15 minutes only the minute attention span even in that they are not fully focused Mind goes on switching. Very tentative, not at all attentive. No jumping from one to the other. So that kind of a mind will not realize Brahman. Why? Because to realize Brahman, one has to transcend the body mind into it, and a proper focus is required. So listen to understand. Listen with single pointedness. I am coming to that. I prefer listening. Listen with single pointedness. So in Tulsi Ramayan, they are there's this uh, Ram Gita, where Bhagwan Ram, Lakshman, Sita Ji, when they are in the forest, one day Lakshman approaches Bhagwan Ram. Now you see they are not relating as brothers. He has approached Bhagwan Ram as a as a lord and as a guru, and he takes the bhav of a shishya. And he asked Bhagwan Ram, "What is Maya? What is Bhakti? What is Nyan? What is Vairagya? All that." And before he answer, Bhagwan Ram tells Lakshman, "Suna ho taat man mati chit lai." Meaning, any calls him taat. Taat means son. Meaning lovingly is calling him a son. Listen carefully. Bring these three together and listen. Before he gives the answer, man is the seat of emotion. Mati here means the buddhi, intellect. Chit means memory. We have learned now man, buddhi, chit, the ahanka. So Bhagwan said, man, mati, chit, lai, chit, the ahanka, rasaide. So we need to listen with ahanka only. They don't listen to their knowledge. They listen to that the speaker. No such thing. You are interested in truth or judging the speaker? I am mean, judging the speaker. Sometimes it is necessary to understand whether it, you know, what you say, our hearing is happening or not, is the style suitable to me or not. That's a different matter. But many times, one is sitting to judge who knows better. I know more or less nothing. So this too I know, mean, this too I know, mean, this too I know. Mean. I think you said to me. So one is judging. So put the ahankar aside, put the prejudice aside, and listen with man mati chitlaai. What does that mean? Don't be emotionally disturbed. Have healthy emotions in the mind while listening. Positive state of mind. Man. Mati means. Listen, not with preconceived ideas, with an open intellect. Because many people listen not to know the truth; they listen for validation of their belief. And sometimes they don't listen for validation of their beliefs also. They listen to point out to other person, "See, this is for you." I keep telling you, you don't understand. Now, see, 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 he's telling you, do it. Is for you. We have to do it for ourselves. 
putting aside our false notions when we listen we are ready to replace the knowledge replace the old knowledge with the new one so that is called mati so emotions are not disturbing imagine bhagwan giving the gita at the beginning when arjun collapsed not not after arjun surrendered as soon as arjun collapsed bhagwan giving the gita would arjun be in a state to listen bhagwan allows him to pour out fully first chapter arjun pour, pours out fully bhagwan is patiently listening he doesn't say are time waste not to baba bol jaldi bol kya bol i already have the solution going to tell you nothing to john lamenti full first chapter he goes on lamenti I want to be patient with this. Now, when he surrenders, he has become open. Then the knowledge is there. So emotional disturbance is not there. And Arjun is ready to change his thought process. He is willing to let go of wrong notions. So that is called mati. To so bring the mati. And chit, chit is the memory. So when I listen, I should listen. not lost in the memories i should listen with full attention in the present otherwise i am listening to some lecture and some words or some expression or some story in the lecture what will it do it will remind me of some incident some person and now my mind has gone there my chit is not here it is i got my mind man is gone there so man mati chit in one place then that listening will be proper so now that man mati chit rahi i told you tapon mara the example once when he was taking class early morning and one crow made a sound and one student looked up tapon mara ended the class he said i can't teach such in a lost student i am somebody to say he comes out so our mind has to be fully here and now that is called listening with full single pointedness we can enjoy nest to learn without preconceived notion and if i listen like that then what happens the scripture promises shravanam matrena dhyanam bhavati instant will be realization we don't even have to reflect if the mind is ready The adhikari, the uttam adhikari, immediate will be realization. This manana nididhyasana is required only when I don't have preparation of the mind. And my mind is not listening with full attention. Mind is still identified with the body, with preconceived notions and all that. So, what is the definition of listening or shravanam? As far as Vedanta is concerned, the shravanam as a sadhana is a very important part. Even in bhakti, if you see, how does Bhagwan enter into the devotee's heart through the ears? And that's the symbolism. Krishna entering the house of the gopi through the side window, not through the front door. So Bhagwan enters. So bhakti also shravanam is important. Jnana also shravanam is important. So the definition is shravanam nama tatpariya avadharanam. listening means determination of the essence of what i have heard many times so even a book suppose you read the book what is the essence of that book i should know that then that means i have done the tatparya avadharanam properly i have heard properly so suppose we say bhagavad gita what is the essence of bhagavad gita What will you see? My dharma, you do not like it. I never tell you. Hmm? Don't be be happy. So there are different things. One can take away or take any of these as a to take home and apply it in their life. But the essence is Gita is the moksha sham. It is to tell us our true nature. So, Jiva Brahma Ichya is the essence of it. Now, that I should determine properly. Otherwise, I will take 
some benefit will happen but not the main benefit so that is called tatparya avadharana so listening with full attention is called shravana here is a very nice video on listening and simple practical tips on how we can improve our listening we are losing our listening we spend roughly 60% of our communication time listening but we're not very good at it we retain just 25% of what we hear now not you not this talk but that is generally true let's define listening as making meaning from sound it's a mental process and it's a process of extraction we use some pretty cool techniques to do this one of them is pattern recognition so in a cocktail party like this if i say david sarah pay attention some of you just sat up we recognize patterns to distinguish noise from signal and especially our name differencing is another technique we use if i left this pink noise on for more than a couple of minutes you would literally cease to hear it we listen to differences we discount sounds that remain the same and then there is a whole range of filters these filters take us from all sound down to what we pay attention to most people are entirely unconscious of these filters but they actually create our reality in a way because they tell us what we're paying attention to right now I'll give you one example of that intention is very important in sound in listening when i married my wife i promised her that i would listen to her every day as if for the first time now that's something i fall short of on a daily basis <laughs> but it's a great intention to have in a relationship but that's not all sound places us in space and in time if you close your eyes right now in this room you're aware of the size of the room from the reverberation and the bouncing of the, the sound off the surfaces and you're aware of how many people are around you because of the, the micro noises you're receiving and sound places us in time as well because sound always has time embedded in it in fact i would suggest that our listening is the main way that we experience the flow of time from past to future so sonority is time and meaning a great quote i said at the beginning we're losing our listening why did i say that well there are a lot of reasons for this first of all we invented ways of recording first writing then audio recording and now video recording as well the premium on accurate and careful listening has simply disappeared secondly the world is now so noisy with this cacophony going on visually and auditorily it's just hard to listen it's tiring to listen many people take refuge in headphones but they turn big public spaces like this shared soundscapes into millions of tiny little personal sound bubbles in this scenario nobody's listening to anybody we're becoming impatient we don't want oratory anymore we want sound bites and the art of conversation is being replaced dangerously i think by personal broadcasting i don't know how much listening there is in this conversation which is sadly very common especially in the uk we're becoming desensitized our media have to scream at us with these kind of headlines in order to get our attention and that means it's harder for us to pay attention to the quiet the subtle the understated this is a serious problem that we're losing our listening this is not trivial because listening is our access to understanding conscious listening always creates understanding and only without conscious listening can these things happen a world where we don't listen to each other at all is a very scary place indeed so i'd like to share with you five simple exercises tools you can take away with you to improve your own conscious listening would you like that good the first one is silence just three minutes a day of silence is a wonderful exercise to reset your ears and to recalibrate so that you can hear the quiet again if you can't get absolute silence go for quiet that's absolutely fine second i call this the mixer so if, even if you're in a noisy environment like this and we all spend a lot of time in places like this listen in the coffee bar to how many channels of sound can i hear 
how many individual channels in that mix am I listening to? You can do it in a beautiful place as well, like a, a lake. How many birds am I hearing? Where are they? Where are those ripples? It's a great exercise for improving the quality of your listening. Third, this exercise I call savoring. And this is a beautiful exercise. It's about enjoying mundane sounds. This, for example, is my tumble dryer. It's a waltz. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I love it. Or just try this one on for size. Wow. So mundane sounds can be really interesting if you pay attention. I call that the hidden choir. It's around us all the time. The next exercise is probably the most important of all of these. If you just take one thing away, this is listening positions. The idea that you can move your listening position to what's appropriate to what you're listening to. This is playing with those filters. Remember I gave you those filters at the beginning. It's starting to play with them as levers to get conscious about them and to move to different places. These are just some of the listening positions or scales of listening positions that you can use. There are many. Have fun with that. It's very exciting. And finally, an acronym. You can use this in listening in communication. If you're in any one of those roles, and I think that probably is everybody who's listening to this talk. The acronym is RASA, which is the Sanskrit word for juice or essence. And RASA stands for receive, which means pay attention to the person, appreciate, making little noises like, mm, oh, okay. Summarize the word so is very important in communication and ask, ask questions afterwards. Now, sound is my passion, it's my life. I wrote a whole book about it, so I live to listen. That's too much to ask for most people. But I believe that every human being needs to listen consciously in order to live fully. Connected in space and in time to the physical world around us, connected in understanding to each other, not to mention spiritually connected because every spiritual path I know of has listening and contemplation at its heart. That's why we need to teach listening in our schools as a skill. Why is it not taught? It's crazy. And if we can teach listening in our schools, we can take our listening off that slippery slope to that dangerous, scary world that I talked about and move it to a place where everybody is consciously listening all the time, or at least capable of doing it. Now, I don't know how to do that, but this is TED. And I think the TED community is capable of anything. So I invite you to connect with me, connect with each other, take this mission out, and let's get listening taught in schools and transform the world in one generation to a conscious listening world, a world of connection, a world of understanding, and a world of peace. Thank you for listening to me today. So that is where verse 2 ends. <clears throat> we will take up the verse 3 in the next class. Now we will do our Paduka Puja. <clears throat> so, see, there is a very, very short Puja which is there in the sacred book of hymns. But I've got a little longer one in which I will tell you both shorter way to do it also so that we can because this has proper steps all the steps in the uh, sacred book of hymns it has been reduced quite a lot so many steps are just omitted so you can do it in the seat next to you uh, that is a better option or you want to do it in your lap or on the lap which is there in your chair wherever you want to do that's your choice what you have to do is place the the padukas how many of you wanted the, all of you got so if you have brought two small plates right for abhishek so in one small plate you have to put the padukas in which we will do abhishek and then in the second one after we finish abhishek we will take them and place them so place the padukas in such a way that the two knobs are facing you. As though Gurudev is standing in front of you. So the two knobs will face you. 
put it in one small plate keep it in front then you will have archaman so there is a panchapatra or a small glass or a katori where you can fill water one spoon inside it so fill your that patra is called panchapatra and if you have brought a small katori or whatever else it is for filling the water use that and fill up the water put the spoon inside it and there is another very small plate where you can put all the offerings of water and other things so in front of the small plate with padukas put this panchapatra with the spoon and a small plate next to it ready so before we start the puja everything we should arrange properly so that in the puja we are not searching so the next set we should be ready with is two sets of napkins for wiping the padukas and one for yourself where you have to wipe your hand so your napkin you put it on your thigh then in a plate you should have some flowers loose flowers and tulsi ready in another plate we should have very little you can remove and keep if you have you may have got some dabbi or something with chandan kumkum all that but very little you remove in a small plate little chandan little kumkum little akshat if you have a mala then keep the mala also ready with the flowers keep the agarbatti now keep two lamps ready one lamp we will light at the beginning one we will do after agarbatti and one lamp for the aarti if you have brought three lamps then keep all the three ready now after aarti gets over we do kapoor aarti so keep the kapoor also ready in the in a plate where you can put some rice and then put kapoor in that so that the plate doesn't burn hmm. If you really want to sit down, you are welcome to sit down also and do it. It's your choice. So I'm repeating again: what all you need, you just keep all those things ready. In front of you is a plate with the two padukas, where the knob is facing you. Keep another small plate ready, so that after Abhishek, you will place the paduka in there. Then you need three lamps, which should be ready. some plate with flowers and tulsi the panchapatra is ready and the plate with that where water is there that you have to keep in front of the paduka where you are able to take water easily if you are a right hander then panchapatra and the spoon must be in the left side and the plate on the right side if you are a left hander then the opposite then keep a plate where you have chandan kumkum akshat make it you take out and keep in that then you should have a garland ready small garland then agarbatti can be ready put it in a stand or in the banana or any fruit you have brought three lamps already i told you if you have brought any naivedya or prasad that take it out and keep it If anything else you have brought, like a beetle leaf, coconut, keep those things also ready. We will tell when it has to be offered. One plate of arti can be ready. Arti plate is where we have little rice and then we use camphor. If you have brought any envelope. 
to offer Dakshina to the Lord, then keep that envelope ready. That's all. This much is the puja preparation. See, many things in this puja, once we start doing, we realize that these are things which are very readily available to keep it in the puja room. So, every day also, if you have to do, it doesn't take too much time to prepare. Okay. So now this printout that you have, we will be following that printout. The puja begins by lighting the lamp. So Ganesh Ji is now invoked in the form of light. If you have a photo of Ganesh Ji or an idol of Ganesh Ji or anything, you can use that also. Otherwise, generally we light the lamp. So you light the lamp, uh, but be very careful the lamp should not fall or, you know, on the seat or the chair, etc. So after you light the lamp, now we chant the shloka. Om Shuklam Bharadharam Vishnam Shashivarnam Chatur Bhujam Prasan Navadanam Jaye Sarva Vigno Pashantaye now take water, then chant the mantra which is written there and then sit. Three times you have to do this. Om Keshavaya Swaha, sit. Say Om Keshavaya Swaha, chant, sit the water. And then the next one. Om Narayanaya Swaha, say that and sit. Then Om Madhavaya Swaha. Three times done. Now take some water in the right hand. Offer it in the plate. The plate which is next to you for the with the Panchapatra. Offer the water in that plate. Wipe your hand. Now close your right ear with the right hand and close your eyes and chant Om Govinda Yanamaha Govinda is the Lord of the senses so we are telling our ears and our eyes and all the senses don't wander, focus in the people but open your eyes now do one pranayam When you are done, then wash your hands. Wipe your hands. Now lift the right hand up and take Chitu down and move it clockwise. Om Bhuvasuvaha. Chant the mantra and don't repeat. And move this to hand right here. Om Bhuvasuva. Now 10, not full mantra, only Om Bhuvasuva. Only three we are with this. So we have locked the 10 directions so that let no obstacles come from them and may we sit focused in the puja. Now we take the sankalp of the puja. So take one two leaf in your right hand. Pour one drop of water in it. And 
close it with your left hand. Place on your right thigh or right knee. Now the Sankal Pur will take. Sankal Pur is the general one here and after this if you have any specific prayer to ask the Lord that you can ask. And after that you offer it in the plate for water and the peace. Om Namo Pata Samasta Dhuritakshaya Dwara Shri Parameshwara Pritiyartham Asmin Shubhadine Shubhamohote Asmakam Sakutumbhanam Samasta Dhurita Upashantyartham Samasta Sanmangala Avapyartham Sarvesham Ayurarodhya Aishwarya Siddhyartham Jnana Bhakti Vairagya Vidyartham Vidya Vinaya Pratyartham Shri Sadguru Prasada Siddhyartham Cha Dhyana Avahan Adi Shodasho Pacharaihi Param Puja Guru Devanam Swami Chinmayanam Dhanam Paduka Pujam Karishye If you want to pray anything specific, you can ask. You can pray that may our country be peaceful. May all the agitation subside. May everyone be harmonious. When you are done, offer it in the field. If you have a bell, Ring the bell and we invoke the devatas and the divine forces. Om Agam Asam to Devanam, Gamanasam to Rakshasam, Purve Gantara Vamsatra, Devatavana Lakshanam. Now remember Ganesh Ji. Tatra Adavu Sarva Vigno Pashanta Ye Shri Vigno Swaram Smarami, Vakratunda Mahakaya, Surya Koti Samaprabha. Nirvignam Guru Mindeva Sarvakarya Shusarvada. If you have the energy, offer a flower to him. Otherwise, mentally offer a flower to the energy. Or you can offer to the lamp. The lamp is also a symbol of energy. Now, we remember the Guru. So when you offer the flower, you say Om Shri Maha Ganapata Yenamaha. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwaraha, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Gura Yenamaha. Offer a flower to Guru Guru. Till now what we have done, so when you offer a flower, you say Om Shri Guru Dhonamaha. So now what we say, what we have done till now is called Purva Puja. Purva Puja is preparation. So what did we do in this preparation? We invoked Ganeshi, we purified ourselves, we purified our prana, we purified the uh, Samagri we have. Then we have taken the Sankalpa, invited the Devatas, locked the direction. This much is a Purva Puja. Now the main Puja starts from Dhyana onwards. So first we will invoke Gurudev in our heart and then we invoke in the Padukha. So close your eyes. 
and then meditate on the form, invoke the form of Puja Gurudev. And with devotion, we chant. Repeat after me. Dhyayami Chinmayanandam Gurudevam Mahamatim Premapunam Kriyashilam Sadaloka Hiteratam Kripadum Sundarakaram Samartham Satyadarshinam Vacha Tattva Prakashinya Shoka Mohavinashinam Om Shri Chinmaya Sadhguru Vinamaha Shri Vindhya So now we will invoke the master in the Padukha. So touch your hand with the left hand, touch your heart with the left hand and the Padukhas with the right hand. We are invoking him from our heart into the Padukha. Atta Devata Avahunam. We will chant together now. Agacha Deva Devesha Tejo Rashe Jagat Guru. Kriyamana Maya Pujam Brihana Guru Sattama Satyananda Swarupaya Bodhika Sukhakarine Namo Vedya Ved, Namo Vedanta Vedyaya Gurave Buddhi Sakshine Om Shri Chinmaya Sadhgura Venamaha Shri Guru Ava Hayami Now the mother hand. Now the bhav is that Guru Dev is right here in front of you. So when we invite any guest, how we treat them, we invite them, then when they come, we welcome, we offer a seat, we give water, same process. So first we offer a seat, so take a flower, atha asanam, asanam grijyatam, isha nirmalam, svarna nirmitam, adharam sarva jagatam, guru deva namostute, om shri chinmaya sadgura venamaha, asanathe pushpam samarpayam. So when we have less time, then these upacharas, what we do from asana onwards, we don't chant the shloka. We just say, Atha asanam om shri chinmay sadhura venamaha asana te pushpam samar payami. Then Atha padyam om shri chinmay sadhura venamaha padayo padyam samar payami. So like that we skip the shloka, just chant the om shri chinmay sadhura venamaha now for So padyam. Arghyam Achamaniyam. So next three steps are for offering water. So we show the water. Take the water in the spoon, show it to the padukas and offer in the plate on the side. One is to wash the feet, one is to wash the hands, one is to drink. Atha Padyam, Padyam Grihana Bhagavan Pavanam Parameshwara, Satshishyar Dayananda Papam Sarvam Yapohaya. Om Shri Chinmaya Sadgura Venamaha Padayo Padyam Samar Payam Atha Argyam Chaitanya Shashvata Shantaha Yoma Tito Niranjanaha Bindu Nadakala Titaha Tasmai Shri Gura Venamaha Om Shri Chinmaya Sadgura Venamaha Astayo Argyam Samar Payam Atha Achamaniyam Yat Satyena Jagat Satyam Yat Prakashena Bhatiyat Yadanandena Nandanti Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Om Shri Chinmaya Sadgurave Namaha Mukhe Achamaniyam Samar Payam Atasnaniyam Now with a tulsi leaf or a flower, dip it into the water and sprinkle the water on the padukas. We are giving a shower to the Lord. Nityam Suddham Nirabhasam Nirakaram Niranjanam Nitya Bodham Chidanandam Burundam Hanamam Yaham 
ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ಸದ್ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಾನೀಯಂ ಸಮರ್ಪಯ ಅಪ್ಪಟ ತುಳಸಿ ನೌ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ್ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪಂಚಾಮೃತ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಫರ್ ದಟ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ದ ಸಮಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಲಶ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ವಿ ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಕಲಶ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಅನ್ ಆಫರ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಯೂಸ್ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಂಚಪಾತ್ರ ಅಂಡ್ ಜನರಲಿ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಚಾಂಟ್ ಐದರ್ ಗುರು ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಫುಲ್ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಚಾಂಟ್ ದ ಪುರುಷ ಸೂಕ್ತ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿ ಆಫರ್ ದ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಂಟ್ ಥ್ರೀ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗುರು ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ symbolically as you as you offer the abhishek and the last verse unilu mata so after three verses you can remove the padukas wipe and put it in the new plate and we chant unilu mata that time you can remove wipe and put it in the new plate <clears throat> akhanda mandala akaram ಚರಾಚರಂ ತತ್ಪದರ್ಶಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿಜನಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಗುರುಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುವೇವ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಪಂಗ ಮಾತಾ ಪಿತಾ ಬಂಧೋಶ್ಚ ಸಖಾತ್ವೇವ ವಿದ್ಯಾದ್ರವಿಣ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ಸದ್ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ಸಮರ್ಪಯಾಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ನೌ ವಿ ಆಫರ್ ವಸ್ತ್ರ ಸೊ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವಸ್ತ್ರ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಫರ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ವಸ್ತ್ರ ಆರ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಫರ್ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ ಓಂ ನಿರಸ್ತಸೇಹೀಕೃತ್ಯ ಸುದರ್ಶನ ರಹಸ್ಯಂ ಯೋ ದರ್ಶಯತಿ ಭಜಾಂ ಗುರುಮೀಶ್ವರ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ಸದ್ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ವಸ್ತ್ರಾರ್ಥೆ ಪುಷ್ಪ ಸಮರ್ಪಯ ಇನ್ ಕೇಸ್ ಯು ಆಫರ್ ವಸ್ತ್ರ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಆಫರ್ ಆರೆಂಜ್ ವಸ್ತ್ರ ಟು ದ ಟು ಗುರುದೇವ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ್ ನೌ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಭಸ್ಮ you can apply bhasma vande ham satchidanandam bhava pitam jagat gurum nityam purnam nirakaram nirgunam swatma samsthitam om shri chinmay sadgurave namaha bhasma raksham samarpayam if you don't have don't worry of the flower now offer sandalwood meaning gandha gandha and kumkuma chandan and kumkum so pour little water in the uh, chandan mix with the ring finger kumkum you don't need to put water just in chandan is enough mix with the ring finger and we will apply so where to apply on the two knobs in the center and at the end of the padukas three please sarva shruti shiro ratna virajita padam bujah vedantam buja suryo yah tasmay shri gurave namaha om shri chinmay sadgurave namaha gandham samarpayami tadupari kumkumam samarpayami when we offer no we should offer it nicely how do we apply when we apply no many people just take like that or somehow i get the look fine we apply nicely for us and apply like that nicely for us huh yes yeah, all 
comes up. Uh, there is Sandalwood in all the three, then Kumkum in all the three. Next will be Akshat. Akshat also in all the three. Ata Akshataha, Akshata Standu, Lashudra, Kumkum, Enavirajitaha, Maya Nivedita, Bhakya, Grahana Parameshwara, Om Shri Chinmay Sadhura Venamaha, Akshatam Samarpayam. Ata Akshata. Now, if you have Mala, then you can offer the garland. Atta Arjana, oh sorry, Atta Pushpam, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Para Brahma, Tasmai Shri Gura Venamaha, Om Shri Chinmay Sadhguru Venamaha, Pushpai Hipuja Yami, Pushpamalam Dhara Yami. Now we will do the Archana. One or eight names of Buddha Guru Dev. So with every name one should take a flower, bring it close to the heart. So you have to hold the flower like this. Between the two middle fingers and the thumb. This is called Mridha Mudra. So this is a deer. Our mind is a restless deer. And we are trying to Give away our vasanas and make this mind quiet. So with every name we remember, we offer one vasana to the Lord. And cultivate one good quality of Guru Devanas. So this 108 names will be there in the sacred book of names. Or in any other book you have, you can check. So use the flower and pluck the petals and offer it. Or you can offer some rice also. Rice also you can offer. And if everything gets over, don't worry, mentally offer. No problem. <clears throat> we will do it together. Om Maja Yanamaha. Om Avyaya Yanamaha. Om Avinashini Namaha, Om Achintya Yanamaha, Om Apramiya Yanamaha, Om Ajitiya Yanamaha, Om Maniketa Yanamaha, Om Manishasana Priya Yanamaha, Om Mantasakshini Namaha, Om Mantaryami Namaha, Om Mananda Yanamaha, Om Atmaswarupa Yanamaha, Om Angla Bhasha Viduttama Yanamaha, Om Ishwara Yanamaha, Om Mudala Radaya Yanamaha, Om Utsaha Vardhaka Yanamaha, Om Ekasmai Namaha, Om Omkara Vidhi Namaha, Om Karuna Sadhara Yanamaha, Om Karma Parayana Yanamaha, Om Kala Tita Yanamaha, Om Kaivalya Swarupa Yanamaha, Om Kritatmani Namaha, Om Kritakritya Yanamaha, Om Gita Jnana Yajna Pracharaka Yanamaha, Gurave Namaha, Om Guna Tita Yanamaha, Om Granta Krite Namaha, Om Chinyana Yanamaha, Om Chinna Samshaya Yanamaha, Om Jagadatmani Namaha, Om Jagat Sakshini Namaha, Om Janapriya Yanamaha, Om Jitendriya Yanamaha, Om Jeeva Pramaitya Vidhi Namaha, Om Jeevan Mukta Yanamaha, Jena Mandiro Dharaka Yanamaha, Om Tapogana Shishya Yanamaha, Tapasvini Namaha, Om Tapana Shana Yanamaha, Om Tithasvarupa Yanamaha, Om Tejasvini Yanamaha, Om Dehatita Yanamaha, Om Vatita Yanamaha, Om Dharanishtaya Yanamaha, Om Dharmasamthapata Yanamaha, Om Dhimate Yanamaha, Om Dhira Yanamaha, Om Dhaira Prabha Yanamaha, 
వెంకటేఖ తులసీలి ఆఫర్ అంద నైవేద్యం ఆఫ్ ఆఫ్ తులసీలి అంద నైవేద్యం ఆఫ్ ఇన్ యువర్ హ్యాండ్ మార్క్ ఇట్ యువర్ మీల్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎనీ ఎనీథింగ్ విచ్ ఇస్ ప్యాక్ ఓపన్ ఇన్ దాట్ now we will be offering the naivedya so keeping the tools in your hand so we have learned five pranas right so this is prana this is apana vyana udana samana so this leaf half leaf that you have should move from one finger to another with each mantra so above the food we will do this mantra so like this we have to offer it to the adhikas so keep the tulsi between your finger and the thumb and then move it like this om pranaya swaha towards the padukas om apanaya swaha om vyanaya swaha om udanaya swaha om samanaya swaha om brahmane swaha apad to the padukas ready నైవేద్యంగ్ మధ్యే మధ్యే స్వాదోదకం సమర్పయామి హస్తముఖ ప్రక్షాళనం సమర్పయామి చందన్ కుంకుమ అక్షతని హిరణ్య గర్భ గర్భస్థం హేమ బీజం విభావసో అనంత పుణ్య ఫలదం శశ్వత్శాంతిం పయచ్చమే ఓం శివ చిన్మయ సద్గురవే నమ సువర్ణ పుష్పదక్షిణాం సమర్పయామి సో ఇఫ్ యూ హ్యావ్ అ థర్డ్ ల్యాంప్ లైట్ దట్ ల్యాంప్ ఫర్ ది ఆరోపి ఇఫ్ నాట్ యూజ్ ద ల్యాంప్ ఆఫ్ ద డీప్ ద స్టెప్ ఆఫ్ డీప్ అండ్ దెన్ పుట్ ఇట్ ఇన్ అ ప్లేట్ అండ్ విత్ రింగింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద బెల్ వి విల్ చాండ్ గురుదేవ్ ఆరోపి ఫస్ట్ kapurarti we will do after that ready arati shri chinnaya saturu ki divya roopa murati karuna ki arati sadguru ki charano me unake shanti samaye శరణాగత భ్రాంతి మిఠాయి పాప తాప సంతాపహరణకి ఆరతి శ్రీ చిన్మయ సద్గురుకి ఆరతి సద్గురుకి వేద ఉపనిషద్ గీతా కో గాయా ధర్మ సనాతన ఫిర్ సగాయా శుద్ధ నీతి ప్రీతి శంకర్ కి ఆరతి శ్రీ చిన్మయ సద్గురు కి ఆరతి సద్గురు కి సిద్ధ బాడి కి తపో భూమి మే నిత్య విరాజే గురు హమారే భక్తహృదయ ఆనంద శ్రోతకి ఆరతి శ్రీ చిన్నయ సద్గురుకి ఆరతి సద్గురుకి ఆరతి సద్గురుకి నా లైక్ ద క్యాన్సర్ again the bell in the bell om natatra suryo bhati na chandra tarakam ema vidyuto bhanti kuto yam agni tameva bhanta manubhati sarvam tasya bhasa sarvam idam vibhati om shri chinmay sadgurave namaha 
मंगल निराजन समर्पयामि so what has to be done now take one spoon of water circle it around the arati put it in the plate then take one flower circle it around the arati offer it to guru dev now take the arati by yourself ओम श्री चिन्मय सतगुरवे नम अपर फ्लावर समस्त राजोपचारा समर्पया सो दिस कंप्लीट्स द मेन पूजा विथ सिक्सटीन स्टेप्स नाउ द लास्ट पार्ट इज कॉल्ड उत्तर पूजा वेर वी सीक फॉरगिवनेस ऑफ द लॉर्ड एंड प्रे दैट वी गेट द फुल ब्लेसिंग ऑफ द पूजा अथ प्रार्थना वाचा मनसेन्द्रियर्वा बुद्ध्यात्मना प्रकृते स्वभावा कौमि अद्याल परस्म नारायणा समर्पयाटर इन योर राइट हैंड एंड चैंट दिस मंत्र एंड देन ऑफर द वाटर लाइक दिस लाइक दिस प्रतिष्ठापयामि Earlier you had said bhoor bhuva suva ha. So now bhoor bhuva suva rom actually. Suva ha is written, but it should be bhoor bhuva suva rom. So move it anti-clockwise. Om bhoor bhuva suva rom. Now Shanti mantra. Om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachate. पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवा वशिष्यते ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि सो दिस इज अ सिंपल पूजा वन कैन डू दिस एवरी डे आल्सो इफ यू लाइक इन अ शॉर्टर वे विदाउट द श्लोकस जस्ट द स्टेप्स one can do it on special occasions one can do it also on every thursday or any one day of the week depends on how one wants to do now what will we do with the things which are offered in the puja so all the consumables the flowers and water etc offer it below a tree don't put it in a river body offer it below a tree or in some plant it will become manure Nivedya, you can distribute to all, and what else is there? Coconut, actually, you can break and distribute as prasad. Ideally, coconut, when we offer in Nivedya, should be broken only and offered because symbolic of offering of our ego. But if you offer with Dakshina, then you have to offer Purna full. That is what in Narad Bhakti Sutra. जप ऑफ ओम 